Zoe, is now a good time? I have something to talk to you about. Yeah? What's wrong? It's about Dad. He seems to have dementia. What? He does? No way. He's only in his mid-sixties. It's not especially early for it to happen. Maybe, but... When I called him the other day, he seemed just fine. He's still pretty much the same as usual. He can live his daily life. Maybe a little more inadvertently. They say he's in a really early stage. I see. I'll have to go see Dad soon. But you just had a baby three months ago. You're busy raising the baby right now, right? I am, but I'd like to go see him. I'm worried. He's fine here. Besides, didn't you say your husband, Eric, is on a long business trip? Well, yes, but... I feel bad for the three-month-old baby. To move him a long distance, they would have to fly. I'm sure if I asked Eric's parents, I could go. I think they'll take care of the baby for a few days. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'll take care of Dad. You should take care of the kid first. If something happens, I'll call you as soon as possible. It's fine, because nothing is going on right now. Thank you, brother. I'm glad you're back in town. I had to run home after I screwed up my job. I wish I could have moved in with Dad, but... Dad keeps saying that he wants to live alone. He won't even listen to me. Yes. I might feel safer if you moved in with him. But it's hard, isn't it? I'm sure your wife, Mila, wouldn't want to live with him. Plus, Dad has started to show signs of dementia. Well, actually, Mila says she's okay to move in with Dad. Are you sure? Well, she lost both her parents early. That's why she wants to give my dad the filial piety he deserves. That's great. I've only met her a few times, but you found a great woman. The opposite of you, who has caused us so much trouble in the past. Ugh. Let that go. But I think it'll be awkward for Dad to live with her. Even though we're going to take care of him? He's been alone since Mom passed away. I think it's a little awkward for him to live with someone else again. It's not that he doesn't like it or anything. If I were old and thought about living with my kids and their partner, I would have some hesitation. You think so? I guess it depends on the person. Some people are fine with it, like you. But some people care about things like that, like me or dad. But from your point of view, you'd be happier if we lived together, right? Well, I guess. I wouldn't have to worry as much. But I can't force you to do it. Maybe we could get a singer support apartment to rent. I see. Well, I'll see how it goes. To be honest, I don't know what's changed now either. I got it. Well, take care of Dad. My husband will be back from his business trip next month, and I'll be able to go back home at least once. Okay, I'll call you if something happens. Hey brother, I'm home now. Oh, thank God nothing happened to you on the way home. Yeah, everything was fine. The flight was on time. But the house... Eric was watching our daughter, so I think he'll need a little cleaning. <laughs> it's okay if it's just a little bit. He watched her by himself for three days. What about me? I do that every day. But sure, he really helped me this time. He took care of our daughter at the end of his business trip, so I have to thank him. Thanks to him, I was able to go back to our parents' house. Yeah, it's important for couples to look out for each other. Oh, speaking of gratitude, thank you too, brother. I really appreciate you moving in with Dad. No, it's because you encouraged Dad to move in with us. I'll be honest, I was barely making rent by myself. I'm glad we moved in together. But he might need nursing care in the future, right? I'll do everything I can, so please talk to me about it. To make up for the distance, we'll do our best to support you. Thank you. That means a lot. Even if he has to go into a facility, Dad's got a good savings account. I'm sure he'll be fine. Even if that's so, I can't depend on you guys so much. Let me know if there's anything I can do. I'll let you know. Take care of Dad for me. 
I'll be in touch. Zoe, are you still awake? Yeah, I'm up. My daughter just went to bed. Then I'll talk to you by text. Okay. So what's up? I want you to calm down and listen. What's going on? Dad's gone. What? What do you mean? Why? Why? Did he wander off like people with dementia do? He went to the mountains today to pick wild vegetables. I thought it'd be a nice change of pace for Dad. Okay. Then he disappeared. That means he's lost. Did you call the police? I mean, why didn't you call me before? It's nighttime. You pick wild vegetables when it's light out, right? Actually, it wasn't an accident. What? What do you mean? I stayed in the mountain and Mila went home. Then I found a letter in Dad's room. He said that he had dementia and didn't want to be a bother to us, so he was leaving. He asked me not to tell the police and not to go look for him. Oh my God! Why? The last time I saw him, he was in good spirits and was trying to fight dementia as hard as he could. Since you left, he'd been suffering from dementia even more. I'm sorry I didn't tell you. But Dad said he didn't want me to tell you. No. Is it that bad? You know how people with dementia often ask if dinner's ready. Dad started doing the same thing. I think he wanted to leave the house while he was still conscious. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything. I've been looking for him all this time. I knew he couldn't have gotten far on his own two feet. I'm on my way there now. You can't come now. The last flight is already gone. I know, but I'll be there first thing in the morning. Anyway, first call the police. We can't just leave him wandering around at this hour. He's a grown man. Even if I call the police, they won't do much about it. They'll treat him as a missing person. But Dad has dementia. He left a letter for us, so they won't think he's a wanderer. He left on his own will, and it's not like it was an accident or anything. Even more than our old dad, priority is given to underage runaways or those involved in incidents. Zoe, you need to calm down. How can I be calm? How can you be so calm, brother? I'm not calm, but it doesn't change anything to be in a hurry. Dad left on his own. I'm sorry. It's okay. I know how you feel. I'll keep looking. If I don't hear anything by tomorrow morning. I'll call the police. Okay, I got it. I head over there tomorrow. I don't think there's anything you can do if you come here. That may be true, but I want to go. I'll leave my daughter with Eric's parents. Okay. Call me in the morning. I'll be ready to take your call. Brother, I found Dad. I protected him. What? You protected him? Dad came to the house this morning, all torn up. Oh my God! He's alive. What does that mean? I mean, the mountain where Dad disappeared. I didn't tell you this, but every year a few people die up there. The terrain is bad, and people get lost. That's why I was wondering if maybe. I thought maybe he didn't live. How can you say that? Dad said that you and your wife left him. Why would we do that? Dad must have had a misunderstanding. He's the one who left on his own. And there was a letter left for us. It was a premeditated runaway. He says he didn't write anything like that. He's got dementia. He forgets things that don't suit him. You don't know Dad these days. He's been going through a rapid decline. Hey, brother, tell me the truth. I've been thinking about it a lot, and you've been acting really strange lately. Me? Because if you were my older brother back in the day, you were never the type to live with someone. You said you would never ever take care of our parents. I'm getting older and rounder too. 
You know what I mean? I thought so too at first, but I'm not so sure anymore. If he had advanced dementia, you wouldn't take him out to pick wild plants. So you'd take care of dad with dementia? You can't, can you? After you had the baby, you left dad and lived apart on your own. I mean, wouldn't it be annoying for him to be in your house? What are you talking about? I left him in the mountains for all of us. I'll go dump him one more time, so send him back to me. What? I mean, who wants to be around an old man who's just a distraction, right? You and I both have our own lives. Don't worry, I'll do better this time. Are you serious? Your life is over, brother. What are you talking about? Dad doesn't have dementia. What? Dad told me everything. Brother, since you came back to our hometown, you've been asking for money, haven't you? That's not true. I just asked him if he could help me. If he didn't give you the money, he said, sometimes when he wasn't home, you'd go into the house without permission and take the cash. So he pretended to have dementia. What do you mean? Because when dementia comes, you and your wife's behavior will be more drastic. As Dad thought, you've pretty much been doing whatever you want since you moved in with him, haven't you? Are you sure Dad doesn't have dementia? Brother, have you ever followed him to the hospital? No. But the neighbor, Mr. Jack does. He used to give Dad a ride when he went to go to the hospital by himself. That's right. You heard about his condition through Mr. Jack, didn't you? Dad had Mr. Jack help him pretend to have dementia. If I told you I was following him to the hospital, you would have found out right away, right? But you didn't follow him, did you? Dad knew your personality, and he was acting accordingly. He wouldn't do any hassle. But he said that he suspected that once he got dementia, he would show what it is you really wanted. So he remembers everything? Yes. He didn't expect to be dumped in the mountains. And you pushed him off a cliff? No. That was just Dad slipping. Dad has dementia. So you thought, if he said something bad about you, you could get away with it. That's too bad. Dad has kept all the evidence of what you've done. If you don't want to be handed over to the police, leave the house now. The police? What do you mean, evidence? He recorded the conversation of you when you were at home. And he recorded a film of what happened on the mountain. The cameras are so small now, you didn't even notice. There's no way Dad could do that. Dad's hobbies are radio, cameras, and trying out new products, you know? I told you before, right? When you called, I said he was more solid than I was. The call was about digital camera. He would explained it to me in detail. And Dad knows a lot more about that kind of stuff. Sorry. I thought it was best for us. Best? You just wanted to take Dad's assets, didn't you? Once you found out he had dementia, I heard you were planning to change the name of the house. But Dad spilled tea on it and the papers were ruined. Also, Mr. Jack told me something. He said you weren't looking for Dad at all yesterday. Zoe, I'm sorry. Apologizing isn't enough. I'm not the one you should apologize to. It's Dad, don't you think? I'll apologize to him too. I'll take good care of him at home. I'm not sending him back with you and your wife. Also, he said he wouldn't give you any of his assets. He wants you out of his house. If he kicks us out, we won't have a place to live. Please don't do that. Then why don't we file a police report? And what do you mean by he won't give me his assets at all? He can't do that. That's right. I'm gonna get out of the house, so he's gonna give me a living will. I'm his biological child, so I'm legally obligated to get the inheritance share. Dad says he won't give you that inheritance share either. He's going to exclude you from the inheritance. What? So I don't get anything? You try to take Dad's light, so that's what you get. That's all. Wait a minute. I did what I did because I thought Dad had dementia. Even if he had dementia, you shouldn't have done that. And yet, you become defiantly unrepairant without reflecting on the situation. 
You are not a part of my family. Zoe, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'll never hurt Dad again. So please let me talk to him. I won't listen to anyone who would harm my precious dad. He doesn't want to see your face. You haven't changed at all. Honestly, you've gotten worse than you were before. I really needed the money. No matter how much I asked, he wouldn't listen. So, I didn't do it because I wanted to. Even if so, you did it for your own reasons, didn't you? Dad had nothing to do with it. I won't listen to anything you have to say. It's not Dad we don't want. It's you. We're throwing you away. Then, I asked a lawyer to exclude my brother from the inheritance and so on. We proceeded with all sorts of paperwork. Instead of filing a report to the police, we asked my brother and his wife to leave the house immediately, and we got our parents' house back without a problem. Apparently, my brother and his wife had debts, and in order to pay them off, they took over the family home. They wanted to take over my father's inheritance to pay off their debts. Whatever the reason is, it was not a good reason to harm my father. And if my father really was sick, it could have ended in what my brother wanted. I will never forgive him, so I never want to see his face again. I will not help him in any way. I don't know what he will do with the debt. So whatever happens to them, it will be my brother's and wife's responsibility. Since then, I've had a discussion with my father. We have sold the family home, and he is going to live near my house. My husband and I were also concerned about my father, and suggested that we live together. It seems like my father still prefers to live alone, but living close to us, we will be able to see each other more often. I can live more comfortably than ever. In addition, Mr. Jack, who lived near my parents' house and cared for my father, as a token of my gratitude, we discussed the matter with my father and gave him a gift before his death. I will live my life being grateful to those who support me every day. And with my father who lives so close by, I hope to make many happy memories.